Shane Spiel. Uh, I'm a professional musician, and I've also created my own marketing business on the side that started out for me being a musician. And before I went into music full time, I used to sell radio advertising. I got my start in a little um, little office right around the corner at 98 YCR. York top, top 40 music, and I used to go, for eight years, I used to go knock on businesses' doors and talk to them about their advertising, and, and it was one of those jobs that was 100%, um, you know, it basically, if I didn't sell, I didn't eat. You know, I made it 100% commission on that job, but I made it work for eight years. Soon after that, I left radio and went marketing for an auto auction. And it was a completely different thing. But in all of it, marketing is nothing but connecting with the audience. Uh, just like whenever I'm on stage performing, I've got to connect with my audience. I need to find songs that they're going to pay attention to. It's not about me, it's about them. So in, in the auto auction, I had to figure out what the car dealers like. What are they looking for? Um, you know, finding those things that would capture their attention. Well, that auto auction was sold to a big conglomerate, and I was left out outside one day, and I fell back on my music full time. In order for me to promote myself, hey guys, um, I have been using social media to the point where my use of social media has created a worldwide movement. Uh, the cigar box guitar has taken off simply from what I've done and others have done with me through social media. The instrument was basically forgotten about in history. And we brought it back and now we have the world's record for most cigar box guitars played this, what was it, last month, two months ago in New York. Um, and there are thousands of people worldwide that are making and playing these things. I, my social media with that started with making homemade websites when Web 1.0 was still around. Uh, then I created my own social network for it called CigarBoxNation.com, and that is still going on, and that's over 20,000 members there. Uh, and then Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all these. So that's my background. Um, I do this, I, I have other clients as well. I've done this, the social uh, networking for the Susquehanna Folk Festival. Uh, one of my main clients is called cbgiddy.com and they sell guitar parts to people worldwide. So let's get into this. Uh, let me see, I guess I do a space bar. Yeah, there we go. You got all these companies, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Pinterest, yada, 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 which ones do you use? Because I'm sure that's usually the biggest stressor Anytime someone's trying to figure out how am I going to market my company, how am I going to market my business, my services, whatever, which ones do I choose? Well, before you even pick any one of those, you need to define who you're going after. Um, because each of those services have different targeted demographics. Um, and this is my own observation. Don't count this as gospel. This is what I've seen from my own work. Facebook works great for adults 40 plus. Instagram, very visual, all photos, is better for uh, teens through, you know, somewhere around 40, 45 years old. That's starting to get a little bit older. Some more adults are going into Instagram, but for right now, that's where it is. Twitter. Twitter, I find it to be ages 20 to 40, but it's mostly in urban areas. JJ laughs. I see you laughing about that because JJ is awesome at Twitter. Uh, she's one of the ones that I follow, but I'm seeing that the Twitter audience is usually for your big urban areas. Uh, around here, not as much, uh, at least for what I've seen. I don't use Twitter for marketing myself personally. I, my Facebook, I mirror it to Twitter. I hooked up my Facebook, so whatever I post on Facebook automatically goes to Twitter and I don't need to worry about it. Um, you know, because I don't see a lot of movement for my products and services there. 
Um, I use Twitter basically for the news, for myself. The people I follow on Twitter are citizen journalists, and that's where I go for news. LinkedIn, LinkedIn is, what I'm seeing is job seekers. LinkedIn tries to push itself as working business to business, but in all honesty, most people use it just to find a job. Uh, so if you are in a company, you're looking for um, people to hire, you need to definitely be on LinkedIn and have a full profile and uh, because they're going to be looking here. This is, LinkedIn is the help wanted classifieds uh, of today. Snapchat is teens, is teens, I don't even deal with Snapchat. I don't have any clients, so I can't give you any information on Snapchat. I, I have no idea. Uh, and then there are older networks, like the one site I mentioned, cigarboxnation.com. It is like an old-fashioned Facebook. It is one of the social networks that came out right before Facebook hit and is still alive. Well, my little site, cigarboxnation.com, continually gets new people in there. And the majority of them, it says men 55 plus. The truth is it's probably men 65 plus, 75 plus. It is old men that don't trust Facebook. And they like these old-fashioned networks, and you know what? Um, adults, 70 plus, have more disposable income than anyone else. So if you have a business that's going after a retired person, uh, and you see social networks that aren't necessarily on Facebook, they're old-fashioned type of social networks that are still going on, there is value to those. Um, it's just a lot of people do not trust um, the security of Facebook or any of these others. So these older sites actually <laughs> still get some traction. Are you doing anything with uh, Tumblr or Imgur? Uh, no, I don't do much on Tumblr. Uh, Tumblr seemed to, <clears throat> Tumblr just lost a whole ton of viewership because they changed their pornography rules. Yeah. And the majority of Tumblr accounts had been porn for a while. And so I don't know what the future of Tumblr holds, but I don't do much in there. And the one, oh yes. But would you Google Web 2.0 networks to find a list of the ones? No, what, when I say <coughs> Web 2.0 networks, what I'm talking about is if you know of an older type of chat room or an older type of website that still has people chatting, they, they call them bulletin boards as well. The old bulletin board websites that are still alive usually get people in the retired category. So and if you were to look to find one, you would look for bulletin boards? Yeah, whatever subject, whatever industry, whatever hobby, uh, you would be going to look for those old bulletin boards and seeing if there's still activity. And if there is, I guarantee you, the majority of the people are probably a more of a retired age because, again, they just don't trust Facebook. Um, and then, the next thing. You need to decide which networks to ignore. Now, you know your demographic, or you need to find out who you're going after, what age, who they are, what they like. Stop stressing out about all the other ones. Um, like I said, I don't worry about marketing to Twitter because I don't get much traction from it. So what I do is Facebook allows you to hook up to Twitter so that everything you post on Facebook automatically gets mirrored to Twitter. You know, Instagram does it as well. Facebook, to, or it's Instagram to Facebook. A lot of these things, you just, you need to do your homework for it but if you can't use a certain network and you still want to get on there, you can mirror them. Now your posts, my Facebook posts that hit Instagram aren't that powerful because they're all just Facebook links and there's no photos really and it's, it's, it's sort of blase, but it's there, you know? But I know why am I wasting hours a week on Twitter if it's gonna get me nowhere? You know, time is money. My time is worth money. So, One of my biggest secrets I'm going to give to you right now, and it's based on Facebook. 
I want to tell you right now, I do a lot of Facebook marketing. And I hate Facebook. I hate Facebook with a passion. I hate people's opinions. And I need to have tons of friends on Facebook to get my word out. So you know what I did? If you have me as a friend on Facebook, I'm sorry to tell you, I have unfollowed, unfollowed you. In fact, I have unfollowed everybody on Facebook. I have found, and it's always a cat and mouse game with Facebook because they keep changing their algorithms and things. I have found plugins on Firefox, on Google Chrome. If you do a search for them, they're called unfollow all. And you will go and get your Facebook. You will keep every one of your friends, 100% of your friends. But you will unfollow all of them so that your Facebook timeline, timeline is nothing but the groups and the business pages that you follow. Um, I have found this necessary for myself because as I was working hours and hours a day on Facebook, uh, I kept seeing just some vile, nasty posts from people. And it stressed me out, so I followed everybody. That's my one tip. You don't have to do it, but it's helped me. Uh, all right. Yes. If you unfollow all, can you go back in? Yes, and you follow can. Because then I went and I found my wife's account and I yeah. followed her back. And I <laughs> found my dad's account and I followed him back and a few other people. Uh, yes. Yes. If you unfollow all, you can still go back and find your friends and follow them again. Uh, okay. So we talked about which social networks do you use? Only use the ones you need. Stop wasting your time trying to be everything to everyone. Um, and each business is different. And so this is, you know, I'm giving you like the, the 30,000 foot pers perspective, like the general ideas for all of this. Now, what do you post is more important than anything else. The majority of your posts on social me media need to entertain. Um, People go to social media for fun. I'm sorry, but if you're just posting blase things about what's going on in the shop, or if it's boring, nobody's going to pay attention. Your <coughs> posts need to entertain one way or another. Yes, if you have events, you do need to do your events. Or entertaining can be even like, Michael, you're a musician. OK. Your post could be a free guitar, uh, lesson. Here's how you play uh, Pink Moon, you know, or something like that. That your post could be just a free little lesson or financial advisory. It could be your own little daily fun financial advisory uh, facts or how to get ahead of the game, that type of thing. What you post online needs to be. Um, Entertaining though, and let me see. I don't know if this will get the. Uh, where is? I don't know if this will get the audio or not. Yeah. I had a book that came out last year. It's called Making Poor Man's Guitars, and I did a whole series of these videos that are nothing but photo slideshows. This was done 100% on my iPhone. And all it was was an entertaining slideshow of a, an antique guitar that guitar lovers would love to watch, especially guys that make their own. The classical music came with the app that I used for this. And all I did was I found a good place with good lighting. That's my uh, living room floor right there. And then my book in the very end. Okay, so what you have here is 55 seconds of entertainment and five seconds of selling at the end. Um, but again, I wanted people to enjoy seeing my post. You know, I did, I, instead of me just throwing a picture of my book out there, buy it now, this, buy it now. No, I had to seduce them into the selling point. All right. Stuff that's worked for me for entertaining posts includes 
memes related to your business or fans. Susquehanna Folk Festival asked me to keep doing all these posts for them. How much can you talk about one music festival for seven days a week on social media? You can't. There's not enough performers, there's not enough whatever. But on every Monday, I would find music memes. In fact, I would scour Google, and I had a folder on my computer that I just, I stole music memes from whatever and kept them. And then every Monday, I would post the Monday meme. And it was music related, and it would be on the Susquehanna Folk Festival's Facebook and Instagram pages. Because we used Instagram to go after the younger and Facebook to go after the older. But it was just something fun, music related, and it reminded you, Susquehanna Folk Festival, up top. That's how you use memes. Make sure your memes go after what you're doing in your business. Susan, you got the art gallery, you know, it would be art memes or th like that. It's, you're just reminding people through humor of your business. Um, Lustworthy photo photos and videos, not just pictures or videos. Lustworthy photos or videos. Uh, good photos are important, but you can do them all on your phone. I found out whenever I would build a guitar and went to go sell it, that I had one area in my wood shop that I had great lighting. And I would turn all the other lighting off, and when I was finished with an instrument, I would put it right there at that lighting, get some tools in the background, take that photo. And that's what would help sell my, my instruments. Um, if you're selling products, you know, art pieces, if you're selling um, anything that that you need a good photo, you're in competition with everybody else on Facebook, Instagram, all these others. Um, make the photo interesting. Uh, have fun with it. This is the fun part of social media, is making things pop. Um, another thing I've done, this is called an isolated photo. Now one of the items that I sell personally are guitar slides. And I have unique handmade guitar slides. This is one made out of Colorado River Jade Stone that is milled down and put on your finger and you play slide. Well, if you notice, there's a completely white background to it here. One of the easiest things I've found, I paid 90 bu 95 bucks for it, is this. This is the Flashery light box. I keep this beside my computer because I have a lot of products that are small. And I can just put this in, it's got a light here. I turn the light on, I get my iPhone out, I position it in here. And using my iPhone's picture enhancement little, you know, you can go, once you take a picture, you can change the lighting or, boom, that was completely done on my iPhone. And being that I have so many products, I use this, I could take all my product photos, get them listed online, and when they hit social media, they pop. You know, it's not just like an item sitting on a counter. It, it's just, it absolutely captures your attention. Let's talk about these slideshows again. I'll go back into this because I've done a lot. Um, turning photos into a, a sli slideshow video. This is another one. This is for my client, CB Giddy. Again, it's very similar to the other one I did for my book. Again, this is all on my iPhone. And I'm going to stop this right now because it's very similar to the last one I did. Uh, but the phone app for that is called Ripple, R-I-P-L. There's a free version and then there's a paid version. Paid version is like 10 bucks a month. I use the paid version. Um, and what it does is if you are, if you have a small business that uh, has products, um, scenery or something that you would m rather have a moving photo, because moving photos, moving videos on Facebook and Instagram get more attention than static photos. Here's uh, Susquehanna Folk Festival. I took one of their performers, took all her promo photos off of her website, and one of her songs. 
and I turned it into a moving video so that as you're scrolling, you see this moving around. The other thing is, you don't need to learn design to do these. These are templates. All templates. It's just fill in the words, fill in the photos, and it puts it together for you. Then it'll automatically post it to Facebook, Instagram, and other social medias. Especially if you have the paid version, you have all the extra things with it. And there, I just took all, just photos from her website, one of her songs, and the other graphics we were using for the website anyway. Threw them all into Ripple. It shows you uh, what order your photos can go in, and you can move them around everything else. It's a great cheat. Because your moving posts do get a lot more attention. Other entertaining posts on your social media can be on this day in history of something that pertains to what your business is, that it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be interesting. Um, caption this photo. In Facebook and Instagram, sometimes they put more weight on photos that are getting more attention than others. And if you're in a service business and someone's dangling off the ladder trying to put a roof on a house or something like that, and it's just a funny picture from the work site, Post that on there. And caption this picture, and then people will, the you know, family and friends and whatever, will start making fun of them or whatever. But it's a, it's another little idea to get people involved. Uh, best comment wins. What do they win? Nothing. But same type of thing where you, you have a funny picture. Best comment wins the internet, and people just start going. And who can come up with the funniest phrase? Um, Okay, live broadcast on Facebook. Uh, I was one of the early uh, participate, participants in Facebook Live. When they first came out with it, there was just a few people that did it. There was Kanye West, there was like Kardashians, and then you had to submit your driver's license and a gas bill or something to Facebook to get approved. I was one of the early ones that did it, and back when it first came out, it was like gold. My Facebook Live videos work better than YouTube. My Facebook Live videos work better than anything else because Facebook put them on the top of everybody's page because they were pushing it. Now they're throttling them and just making it tougher, but you still can use Facebook Live. Now, this is not, oh, hold on. This is not a video, this is just a graphic here. The Giddy Gang Show is something I developed with my client, CB Giddy. Uh, we started out with a daily live show and eventually whittled it down to every Friday at 2 p.m. He has a broadcast on Facebook. We send out emails. We have paid Facebook ads to promote it. And what he does is every week, this guy has a shop up in New Hampshire where they make instrument parts and they make instruments. And what they do is they created a background that looks like an old shack. And it's just an area in their office. But they got cameras and they do this broadcast for an hour. They perform music, they show off the instruments made by their customers, do shout outs to people online. I've seen this also done, friends of mine work for Cigar Advisor Magazine. Uh, it's a catalog company, they sell cigars. And every Wednesday, they would have a Facebook broadcast at 3 p.m. And I noticed almost all of their broadcast was kind of like Cigars 101. It was for people that usually they were going after a male demographic in their 30s that wanted to start trying cigars. And they would talk about how to cut, what different cigars were, do reviews. Uh, and it was a fascinating thing to watch as you're bored at the office at 3 o'clock on a Wednesday. Uh, but again, it's entertainment. Um, right now, I am filming this with a camera. 
This camera is called a Mevo camera. And as I'm talking to you, I'm, I'm filming this live. Usually I would film this live and have it stream live to Facebook. Now I didn't know what the Wi-Fi was like here, but this is a Mevo camera. A Mevo camera will cost you about 350 bucks. But if you go live to Facebook and it's a major part of your social marketing, this is something you can look at because what it's doing is it's turning my phone into a director's chair where I can, it, it's tough to, for me to show you guys. I'm gonna get right here and I'm gonna go like that. It's real tough, but it, it zooms in on my face just by touching my face here. Or it'll move the camera to different areas of the screen that it has. And we use this all the time in our Facebook. As I'm sitting there talking to my audience live on Facebook, I will have this situated right underneath my Mevo camera. And I'll be looking at the phone every once in a while, I'll glance down. And if I'm playing guitar and I want to show what my left hand is doing, I'll just touch the screen here and it zooms into my left hand. And then I'll do it and in real time, I can be my own director. And I have found this as a great piece, but really only necessary if Facebook Live is a big part of your marketing. I use this also for YouTube videos. Um, and what I'll do is I'll film on there and then I'll put the video into my computer and do further editing. So I, one of the things in this class is I wanted to show you some of the tools that I use. This is one of them that I use. So Mevo camera, I think it's Mevo, yeah, Mevo.com. Is that M-E-V-A? M-E-V-O. M -E -V -O. Oh. Okay. So it kind of gives you a multi-camera yes. effect out of one camera. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's great for guitar lessons. It's fantastic for guitar lessons. For live shows as well. Uh, streaming live, the biggest problem you have streaming live is always Wi-Fi. Uh, from what I understand, Mevo, this is the first gen Mevo. I got it as soon as it came out. Um, uh, apparently, their next gen has where you can plug it directly in to your computer and go wired out to the internet instead of just Wi-Fi. Um, but, you know, it's just a great tool. What's in it for me? Highlighting your customers is probably one of the most entertaining things people can see. Um, because it's all about them. Instagram. 80% of my Instagram posts for my client CB Giddy are what's called reposts. If you are Instagram, or if you're on Instagram and you've ever seen anybody and they have a picture like this and down below you see the original poster's name in a little block like that. This is called a repost. You get the apps like Get Repost or just search your app store for Instagram reposting. The reason we use this is Somebody may tag cbgiddy.com or hashtag cbgiddy. Well, on Instagram, I will search that hashtag and see people's brand new instruments that they built with cbgiddy's products. Then I will take that post and I will go into my repost app and post it on cbgiddy's site. So they see the shout out and they feel special because the company that they got their parts from is acknowledging them. Um, so if you have customers, uh, try to get them to use hashtags if you're using Instagram like this, and then repost them. Uh, Susan, if a customer has a photo of a piece of artwork that they bought off of you and then they hung it in their living room, it's an absolutely great reason to repost it. Uh, I just did one yesterday of someone bought one of my tour shirts and his wife forced him to go to some concert that he couldn't stand, but at least he wore the skeleton t-shirt of Shane Spiel, you know, live in concert. Uh, and I reposted that, and then I added the link to where people could buy the shirts. Okay, other tips for Facebook. Schedule posts ahead of time. You know, this is a big one. Um, my clients, well, both my two big clients, the Susquehanna Folk Fest and um, CB Giddy. I actually will sometimes post a month ahead of time, two to three posts a day, depending on what the client asks for. 
If you're on a business account in Facebook, whenever you put a post in, you can either post it now or schedule the post. And I have a calendar in front of me, and it's a day-to-day -day calendar, and I will put, you know, what post goes when and when it's scheduled to hit on Facebook. I usually go somewhere between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. for posts when people are at work. Um, <laughs> well, serious, it's the truth. When people are at work, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., I also rerun posts all the time. Uh, for my one client, for cbgiddy.com, I would blog a lot. And I would blog and put it on his website and then put those links to Facebook and they were entertaining articles on guitar building, guitar history, music history, blues, whatever that would get people interested in him. We would post that on Facebook. Well, I noticed that only a certain amount of people would see that post, so I'd rerun it again on the weekend. Or six months later, I'd run that post again. If it's a blog that's not time sensitive, hit it a few times because people miss it the first time. So I schedule posts ahead of time, and I'll spend a whole day doing nothing but Facebook posts for clients. And uh, by the time I'm done, I don't want to look at a computer for about a year or two. I mean, whew. Uh, like I said, keep track of scheduled posts with the calendar. And then first post graphics. Facebook is evil. Everything Facebook does, they keep trying to throttle your posts so that nobody sees them and you have to spend more money. The fact is you are going to have to spend money for people to see most of your posts anymore. However, the people that are stark raving fans of your business, search Google Images for Facebook, Facebook see first, and you'll get a graphic something like this. I just took that off of Facebook this, or off of Google this morning and put it on there. What that is, I found it in Google Images. Someone was teaching their fans to see their posts on Facebook first, automatically. I have a few pages I follow that I want to see the Facebook first post. You know, I want to see them first. Uh, the majority of those first ones that I want to see are my competitors. But you want your fans, you want your fans to want to see you first on Facebook if you're using that one. So this is just another little tip there. So what about gaining new followers? Everyone always asks me, how do you gain new followers? And that one's easy. There's only one way. You've got to buy anything. I, I hate to tell you, I just ran a campaign for the Susquehanna Folk Fest this year. And uh, we did a lot of work to gain followers. I'll tell you some of the techniques we use to get free followers after this. But what I tell you that I've done with them was a waste of time compared to what they paid me per hour. They, I told them next year um, they just need to be spending more money on searching new followers and less on manpower time uh, to get some, some of the same results. Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all these companies are in the business of making money. And they will tease you and make you think anybody can market themselves on there and everybody will see it. The fact is, they continually change the algorithms without telling anybody, and they continue to throttle your posts. And the only way you're going to get new followers or have them see your posts big time is to spend money. And to do that, yes, you have to go back to one of the very first slides and identify your demographics. Know who is coming into your store, from what area, because then you use um, those promotional tools within the social media to use them. I wish I could give you real good cheats to get around this, but I've seen, especially in the last year, it's getting harder and harder. You've got to target your audience with money. Um, Here's the free ways to gain new followers on Instagram and Twitter. For the Susquehanna Folk Festival, we only had 100 people following us 
on Instagram to start out. So I went to, I logged on to, to Instagram with the Susquehanna Folk Fest page, and I uh, then went to Philly Folk Fest, Philly Folk Songs, and other similar uh, festivals, kind of like competitors. And I went to all their followers, one by one on my phone, follow, 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 follow. And about a quarter of them would follow me back because they're fans of folk music and they didn't know about this. And so you do a bulk follow and, and then you hope for people to follow back. It's not great, but it does work. And then using your email list, email is still extremely powerful. It's, I use email, email and my YouTube are my two most powerful <laughs> pieces to generate direct sales. Uh, use your email list to drive people to your social media. If you don't have an email list of your customers, you need to find ways to get their email and then make entertaining emails. It's all about entertaining people. Um, time we got. Okay, good. Um, all right, just in time. Um, we, we'll have a little bit of time for Q&A, but as promised, the end of this seminar, I was going to give you my secrets for how to beat up, beat up an ad salesman. I spent eight years selling radio. If you have to buy advertising from a traditional ad rep, uh, I just want to give you some things you need to know. Uh, this is especially for broadcast media. Uh, print media, they tend to uh, dig in their heels a little more. But if you're going to buy a radio campaign or a television campaign, you negotiate your best deal. First of all, that rate card they give you, rate cards are <laughs> just a starting point. For 60 second commercial, it's $120 on 6A to, 6A to 9A or something like that. Nah, that's a starting point. I don't know, if I buy so many of them, I'd pay you 95 bucks a, a spot. How's about that? Hey, these guys, everything can be negotiated. Um, in radio, in television, you can negotiate down on your ad prices, especially when you buy in bulk. The second very important thing is if they're starting to dig in their heels and not give you uh, a cheaper rate, the York area is a blue collar area, which means overnight radio spots still work because you got third shifters working. So you say to your radio rep, I will buy 20 spots off of you, 6 a.m. to 7 p.m give me 23 overnights at the same time. Usually the overnights are throwaways for them. Uh, especially for a bad ad rep that doesn't know the power of his overnights. You ask for matching ads. You get as much as you can. So if it's, if he doesn't give you 20, if he still gives you 10 free ones, you still win. Uh, when I was in radio, um, the majority of the salesmen were 100% commission. I was, uh, and it is basically the old-fashioned um, Glen Gary, Glen Ross, a high-pressure sales thing, and they need to make sales. Uh, so if you do your homework and you know how to buy a media schedule from these guys, Never pay rate card. Negotiate that down. Uh, go for extras. Go for freebies. Go for overnight spots. If you can't get that, go for free concert tickets. Go for whatever you can get out of them because they're going to try to throw anything in there to get you to sign. Uh, so trust me, it is very much an industry where bartering, or not bartering, but negotiating is, uh, is, is a big thing, and not a lot of people know that. I had so many clients that would just buy whatever I told them. Uh, when the fact is most ad reps will, you know, roll over and show their belly if you just 
push back a little bit. That's my quick little bit on how to beat up an ad salesman. Uh, this is my contact information. Um, there I am in my concert get up here. Um, but I have a little bit of time and I can take questions right now. Yes? Is the setup that you have there, I think that's called a gorilla tripod? Oh yeah, this is the gorilla, yeah. Yeah, uh, do you use that in, like, I would like to take images of myself doing my artwork. Uh, mm -hmm. Would you use something like that? Absolutely. Yeah, and these are like 30 bucks, something like that. And that, that gives you enough lighting or you have to provide extra? Lighting? You have to provide lighting. Um, but that's where you use, you know, a window or a white background. I almost forgot. Uh, as two other props I had here is I'm doing YouTube videos. Behind me, an $8 board like this from, I think I got this at BJ's. I could put my website on there and put it behind me as I would do my lessons. So my website was always in my video without even having to do an extra graphic. And then for YouTube, I would always have this pillow in the background as well. And it just reminds people. And the pillow is great because it's not shiny. So if the lighting hits it wrong, it's not going to be bleached out or something. It just sits back there and looks goofy. This little pillow probably got me about 2,000 followers. Is that an Amazon? Thing? Yeah, Amazon. That's throwboy pillows for that one, but there's knockoffs. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. I was um, wondering if you were to strategize as to how to use your time best. Mm -hmm. I need to rebuild my um, social media presence for the business I have. So, if you were to start with um, content on your Facebook page, or trying to get followers, or doing email list, or YouTube videos, if you were to figure out where to start, uh -huh. so it feels less overwhelming. <laughs> Starting with your demographics is first and foremost, to know who you're targeting. Um, like, what is your business? I sell um, vintage home goods and decor. Okay. Um, figure out who the majority of the people that would buy it. Is it a woman of a certain age? Uh, is it mantiques or whatever they're called? Mm -hmm. You know, those type of things. <laughs> you figure out who is going after your, your items. And being that you have items, it's going to be a, um, a visual thing. Mm -hmm. So your Facebook, your Instagram, depending on age, are, are probably two of your best bets. Um, but make sure you always have links to your storefront. So if people see it, then they go to your storefront and buy it right away. Okay. Uh, go ahead. No, I was just saying that spider tripod. Yeah. My daughter's a Girl Scout. They sell something similar during their fundraising season. It costs me nine bucks. Yeah. These are great. These are great. Mine's a little broken. I got to watch how I use it. I've used it so much. I've had this thing hanging from the rafters of my wood shop so that I would have to look up at it. And I used to have broadcasts out in my wood shop uh, for live broadcasts as well before I, I created a little studio in my basement. Um, and I'd have musicians over there. And uh, it was just goofy. But this was the early days of Facebook Live where. We could basically do anything and everybody was paying attention just because it was like, what's going to happen next? Uh, any other questions? Yes. Yeah, about maintaining a website. Yes. Um, I've been um, mixed on that for a while. I actually shut mine down. And trying to, like, but you didn't mention as far as like, having a link to a personal website. So if that's beneficial to have Always. Your, your own home thing. Or maybe I missed it. But, well, I, I didn't hit it on that, but in your posts, uh, it doesn't hurt to add your website uh, to the majority of your posts. You want people going there. You want them to visit. You want them to buy. Uh, Facebook allows you to sell products on Facebook. Like I use Big Cartel as my online web store. I, I subscribe to their service and I list all my products on Big Cartel. Well, Facebook has an app with Big Cartel. and. I was able to go into Facebook and it would import my products from my page. So people could buy them on Facebook, it would be processed by Big Cartel and be a normal sale. That was, I had Squarespace and Same I had, thing. I had a store, but the more items I had, it ended up being like 300 bucks a year because yeah. it upgraded. And I didn't feel like it 
Oh, I spend a lot of money on my storefront, but you but know, if you're I, selling, I, I am selling. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, two things I just read recently with Facebook: you put your price in on on a, an image and something, you basically price it to make you pay for the ads. They will, if you put a price on there, they will automatically turn that posting into a for sale. Post. And you've got to go in and say, no, I don't want that as a for sale post. I want that as a regular post. Facebook is, uh, well, uh, I don't want to say the Antichrist, but <laughs> it's, it's horrible. It just keeps getting worse and worse. Um, and you're always going to have to fight against them. That is how they work, and it's always a cat and mouse game. Um, and yeah, you do, you've got to keep changing your posts back. Um, and so you're saying that when it says a for sale post, then you say, no, I want it to be a regular, a regular post. Oh, okay. If you want, unless you yeah. want to have it as a for sale post. So but that's them just trying to get more money out of you. Oh, because they want you to do that. Yes. got to go through all the setup I had to change one for my client because it created a new page for him. Yeah, I got to it can be changed. I don't know the steps right now, but if you Google it, you'll find that it can be redirected to your proper Facebook business page. And, and again, let me reiterate one thing. For whatever you're posting on whatever social media, each of you is an expert in something. <coughs> Uh, giving away free information, a little bit here, a little bit there, is a powerful thing. I have made over 600 videos on YouTube on how to play cigar box guitar. And those videos have propelled so much of my own personal business and created such a fan base. Um, and all it was was me, in the very beginning, just me setting up my iPhone 4 on my dining room table and showing a guitar lick and then uploading it to YouTube. Um, if you have an expertise in something and you can give a little bit of it away without giving away the store, it's always powerful. People you know, who share the same hobbies, the same desires, the same business, whatever, if there's a little bit of information you can give, it helps. In the same way, if there's something you can teach, skill swaps here for you to do a class as well. JJ is now signing up people for January to do skill swaps, just like I'm doing here. Um, and it's a great way to meet people and uh, to get you know, your passions up. Um, we've got a class coming up this week. Paul's teaching how to play bluegrass guitar, a, a beginner bluegrass guitar session. I mean, it's anything. There's how to do letterpress. There's a big salad. People bring in stuff to make a salad, and they have a Everyone Is that you? That. Everyone should do that. That's <laughs> yours. <laughs> I've done that. It's a lot of fun. Um, take part in this, and it will continue to grow. So that's all I have. My name's Shane Spiel. I do have cards if anyone wants my card. And, uh, you know, I hope you guys got something out of this. Yeah.